about Jesus. Yes. So you told us a story, something about how you feel things here. Please take. Bona ziwa. San Bonani. San Bonani. That is the equivalent of Bonaziwa in Zulu. Yeah. So somebody says, uh, San Bonani. Uh, you say, Ninjan. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and uh, <clears throat> to share a little bit about myself and also uh, what I've done, a little bit about my history. Um, yesterday I told you, I shared a little bit about what I do in South Africa, although that is not uh, just that. Uh, listening to Gay here, um, we live or we come from uh, different sides of the continent. He, is, uh, he comes from the western side, I come from the eastern side. And listening to what he went through during his uh, childhood, that, is, that would be almost parallel uh, stories. That is, uh, that is the hardships that are there. And so I know even here in, uh, in Romania, there are some of the places there are hardships. <clears throat> but you find that uh, when you have, when you discover within yourself that there is something that can help you, and that something that can help you is not coming from somebody else, it's coming from within, that is really, really special. Just a little bit about myself. Um, once again, uh, when growing up, one of the things that happened was that uh, I did not have a, fa a father figure in my life. And you can imagine a boy of uh, five, ten years old growing up, <clears throat> or even a teenager. You're growing up, the other boys are talking about their fathers, they're talking about uh, what they, they did with their fathers. And you find that there you are, you, you, feel, you feel very small. Um, yeah, what, how comes? And you, that really knocks down your confidence in terms of how can you express yourself amongst your peers um, and you, you don't have a father. So that was something that uh, really um, pushed me a little bit when I was uh, growing up. But luckily, uh, I had a very good grandmother who brought me up. <clears throat> my mother was there, uh, but my mother would go looking for jobs so that we could put, uh, they could put food on the table. But my grandma, uh, bless her soul, wherever she is, <clears throat> uh, brought me up very well. And some of the things that uh, she instilled in me are uh, things that I remember up to now, and they are things that I share, especially during the camps with uh, the youngsters that we have at camp. One of the slides that I showed yesterday was to do, the last one with the red t-shirt, uh, was to do with bringing back hope. And you find that if you don't have hope, if you don't have hope in what you're doing, that will, you'll not end up anywhere. But if you have hope, that will energize you. You can do all sorts of other things. You can have all sorts of other things, money, uh, friends and all that. But if there is no hope in your life, you find that, that you're not going to end up uh, very far. And so one of the things that we emphasize uh, during the camps uh, when we work with the youngsters is that aspect of finding hope in your life. Because that gives you the energy uh, from uh, the meditation that we're doing here. That gives you the energy from within, from the Qigong that we're doing. That gives you the energy from within to make that extra step to go a step forward. And <clears throat> going back to my grandma, some of the things that I remember she instilled in me, yes, we're talking about dreams, the power of dreams. Yes, there you are, you have the dream. And it is good to have that dream. But going back a step further, what is going to take you to that particular dream? What is going to help you make those steps to reach your dream? There is the steps that you're going to take in the day-to-day -day life, you, you're going to, to, to do mind mapping and you can map up the, the, the way you're going to, to go there. But there are other uh, things that um, were shared with me and I would like to share that with you <clears throat> in terms of what would get you there. And especially with us, uh, yeah, I consider myself young, with us young, young people. Um, and that is what really makes a human being? What makes a human being? amongst people, what would you, what, uh, for example, 
we're told here, when Nelson Mandela touched somebody, they felt like, wow. Everybody who comes to South Africa, they want to associate themselves with Nelson Mandela. Almost everybody in the world wants to associate themselves with Nelson Mandela. Why? What qualities? What is it that he has? What is it that he has that makes everybody want to be with him? And there are a number of things. And we refer, generally we refer to those as values. And they are universal values. I remember discussing this with somebody yesterday. There is humility. The way he carries himself. He is humble. He loves everybody, especially children. He's known for that. He respects people. He is trusted. So if you look at all these values and we ask ourselves, as far as you're concerned, what is it that will distinguish you and help you to reach your goal, to realize your dream, to get where you wanted to be? And you find that what makes you, what makes us as human beings want to associate with another human being is the way they carry themselves as human beings. The love, the kindness, the support, the humility, the respect, all those values that are there. And one of the questions that I normally ask is, for you to respect other people, do you need to have any degree education? Do you need to have any degree education to love other people? No degree, but education, yes. Okay. Do you need, for you to love other people, do you need to be educated? Hmm? Do you need to go to, to the university to have the, to have the love? No. no. You just need to be a human being. For you to be trusted, what do you need to do? Do you need to go and study about how to trust other people or to be trusted? For you to respect and all that. So as far as values are concerned, that is what distinguishes us as human beings. And those are things that we don't need to go out there to look at for them. It is you being yourself. You respecting yourself to start with. If I respect myself, the respect will flow from me outwards. If I love myself, the love will flow from me outwards. If I am kind to myself, that will flow from me outwards. And so you find that it all starts here. That is how I conduct myself as a human being. That is going to be a huge tool that is going to help me to get out there. And so what I'd like to share with you uh, this afternoon is that as far as carrying yourself, yes, we have the dreams, and it is good to have the dreams, and 100%. But let's remember, what is going to carry you from where you are now to realizing those your dreams in five or ten years? It is how you conduct yourself as a human being. The way you value yourself, the way you respect yourself, the way you conduct yourself as a human being using those values. And therefore, it is through looking at ourselves as an individual, ask yourself, how am I? What am I doing? Would people like to be associated with me the way people like being associated with Nelson Mandela or Mother Teresa when she was alive? So if not, then I need to start looking at myself seriously and say, where can I start checking, doing the checks and balances so that I can find my path towards achieving my dream. And when I'm there, I'll be like one of those iconic figures in our lives who everybody wants to associate themselves with. And with that, I wish you all the best in mapping up your dreams and reaching them. Thank you. Thank you, Naftali. But let me tell you, I see education written on the sky of the planet. Let's put education in front of every one of the seven billion people. And the life will be good for every one of us. Uh, before letting uh, and uh, <coughs> letting Peter Moon and uh, Roberto Qualia to say something, and uh, I, I shall let Hither to to add something. But let me have a, a a dream, a hope today. I'm a pathological optimistic person, uh, and uh, this is the way my life went up and up. But let me wish you that you will be here in two or thirty when a human team will reach Mars. Charles Bolden Jr. Pro promised in uh, the NASA meeting this morning when uh, Curiosity landed on Mars 
that in 230 a human team will reach Mars. So be here in 230. Keep on going with this school. Bring your children and look at how the humankind is going up in the stars. Wow. You know. just speechless at this moment. I had to even write some things down because my heart was beating so fast because this is such a passionate topic for me and um, one very close to my heart and uh, very emotional. But um, I, in talking about the power of hopes and dreams, I think that in all of human history, at this moment, now, um, we are living in the greatest shift. Uh, not only in just technology, in resources, in so many things. And I think that being said, there has never been such a, an exciting time to dream for all of us. It's never too late to dream. And um, I was thinking about the universe and the power of dreams as I was flying over here, and I thought... Uh, the universe sees everything as now. It doesn't distinguish between what you're remembering, what you're imagining, what you're dreaming. To the universe, everything is now. So I was thinking about um, this idea and that it's not so much about the power of traction and just having positive thinking. It's a belief system. And it's about that we are all co-creators and not so much more about the power of attraction, but the power of creation. And we all have this power within us. We have the power to create the future we want. And it starts now, because there's no distinction. We can start today about these things. And it was Gandhi that said, a man is a product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. And I think that's extremely powerful. And I had one more thought when I was thinking about my own path, uh, the things that led me to here, uh, things that have led me to things that I couldn't even imagine being involved in, uh, being, and even thinking. And I carry this little thought with me uh, on my phone, and I, you know, I one of the first things that I look at in the morning. The reason why the universe is eternal is because it doesn't live for itself. It gives to others as it transforms. And um, this is what drives me every day to do what I do. I want every one of us to find what's passionate in your heart and and be that, follow that, because when you follow your heart, you will never go wrong. You will always be in the place you are meant to be. So, thank you so much for. Thank you, Hilda, for everything you have been doing here for such a long time, and I want also to thank our friend Peter Moon, and to ask the same question, you know. You uh, have been so friendly to us. This morning you have been doing uh, Ching Kong with... Uh, you've been uh, through the, out Romania writing about and thinking about. Why? That, that's a very good question, and I can answer it. E ever since uh, I was about, you know, probably younger than most of you at the age of uh, high school, I became interested in science fiction. Uh, my interest went from sports to science fiction, and it caught my interest. And at that point, when I read uh, my first book by Ray Bradbury, I wanted to be an author. And it took me until about the age of 39 to become an author, but it, it was because it excited the mind. And my mind was excited by a, a story called The Kaleidoscope, which was about immortality. And that always caught my interest and I became uh, at the age of 39 having a, a very interesting life up to then I was now 
came of age where I, I met this incredible character named Preston Nichols who had experiences in time, he had theories in time that literally changed the paradigm of the way scientists thought about time. It, it's, it forced, uh, as David Anderson once said about to here before, and I'm sure he will again someday, but this is the cutting edge of, of uh, knowledge, and he wanted to bring me here. David uh, arranged for me to come here on my first trip, and he was mysteriously drawn to this location of, of Atlanticron. And at the same time this was happening, I began to translate or have translated the, the works of Radu Shinamar into English. And I published his first three books and I'm now just about to publish his fourth book. And when we're talking about hopes and dreams and Romania, this is very important because I have followed a path while writing, I have tried to follow a path of truth on my own personal quest. And this has led me to Romania on, on many dimensions. And I have learned, uh, in the, and others, was that the patron god of ancient Romania is Zalmoxis. And Zalmoxis is a god or a creature of transformation. When we're talking about hopes and dreams, he's by legend, somebody who transformed from a human into a uh, god. Now, when we speak of people living to age 71, this is statistically correct, more or less. When I teach Qigong and when I learn Qigong, this will extend your life by decades. The body can easily live to 150 years. It can replicate itself. It replicates itself every seven years. So when you begin to put in oxygen and you put in oxygen into your lobes of your lungs, which most people are using 5% of, it's like using only a percentage of your brain. If you use all of your lung capacity by long, sustained, continued breathing and combining it with certain exercises, you can extend your life and the quality of life decades and decades. So as I'm learning this, uh, decades, oh, I'm now programmed so I can live to 100 and beyond and wow. Uh, there's no pains of arthritis and the things that people, but it's all scientific. It's scientific from an ancient tradition. Now, what has been proliferated to me, and most of you have not read Radu's books at all, but his second book is very interesting because it's about an alchemist who, a part of it is, it's sort of a side story about an alchemist who can, claims to extend the body hundreds of years and possibly even thousands by one of the principles is a geometric device which he explains in some detail, not complete detail but it's a vibration, it emits a vibration that will extend your life. I asked my Qigong teacher about this and he says yes, vibration. You can have vibration, yes. So I'm being encouraged and I've been told by Radu that I will meet this person now, all of a sudden, if I'm being told I can live to 100 or 150 and believe it and practice it, now I'm being told I can live hundreds of years beyond that. Now, something I never wanted to do. Uh, it would seem to be easier to reincarnate, but my theory is that if you're given a gift, you should take the gift. You accept the gift of life. You don't reject it. Rejecting it is perilous if you're a part of life. So, this is a story of about transformation, but this story occurs in your country. And I will be leaving here on Thursday with Jeanette and her husband to go to Sarmen Sejatuza, which is a big part of my experience here. So you, you, this, what I've learned is this is the original country. Uh, Transylvania existed during the Ice Age. It was pristine. The Indo-European language is the Romanian language. The, more archaic form of it, and this is where mankind came out of after the Great Ice Age, because it was pristine, it was not glaciated in Transylvania, and to a lesser degree here in Wallachia. But so, why, why I come back, why I come here, it is, it is the path of truth and that has led me here and led me to not only gifts, but the promise of more gifts. I've already gotten more than I bargained for in this life, 
by actualizing my potential to become a writer. And that path of truth, uh, and the path of truth that Dr. David Anderson was on, led him, I believe he sent me here as a marker in time. He saw from either his subconscious or part of his aspect, says, Peter needs to be here, he must be here, from, from God knows what his experiments are, because I do not know all the details of them, and he keeps them very secret, that I was supposed to be here, and for what, and, and so this is a transformation process for me. So I'm happy to share with you. I hope to return uh, not only to Atlantic crime but to Romania, additionally and subsequently, if, if that can be arranged by the circumstances of life. So it's it's always a joy to see my old friends here and to meet those of you who are new. So this has been my hopes and dreams. If, if I've answered your question, uh, so I, I hope to continue to come and to continue to share. And, and most important for me is to continue learning. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. And from what you said, I understand that uh, I could be myself into a thirty with you when people will land off Mars. It might, it might happen. But I, I'm quite sure that someone will come here. Someone that we will love on this island. Roberto promised me that you will help Sorin in 230 to be around here and with them and with the, their children to, to, to look at the first step of the humankind on Mars. I'm looking towards immortality myself. <laughs> very humble. <laughs> so, uh, after, after, okay, I, I was deeply, deeply moved by the stories I heard and unforgettable stories from our beautiful African friends. And uh, uh, since we are speaking about dreams, uh, I will just tell you about a minimalistic dream uh, that, uh, that uh, happened in my life and that I somehow accomplished. And actually, the, way, the dream went kind of behind uh, its own purpose, uh, yeah, I mean, its own boundaries. And uh, since we have been talking about the future science fiction, this dream has also to do with science fiction. As many of you probably know, I write occasionally science fiction. And uh, I grew up with a kind of myth, which was American science fiction writer Robert Shackley. Uh, Robert Shackley is not so well known to the big public, but it's considered to be one of the greatest 10 science fiction writers ever. And you brought him on the island? Yes, I, will brought, I, I brought him on the island and this is a part of this magic which happens that was not planned and was beyond the boundaries of the dream which I had. Mm -hmm. Because I grew up, I mean, my whole writing changed completely the day I wrote his books. Uh, I may have never become a writer without reading his books actually because they just show me that the way of thinking he was doing which was somehow similar to mine was possible and so actually uh, I have been dreaming about getting in touch with him I was not even dreaming to know him you know? I just wanted to establish at one point a contact you know because I was feeling so close to him and so 19 years ago I sent him a letter it was before the internet before the emails and uh, I got his address from another science fiction author, Harry Harrison, which I met in Jersey in a science fiction convention. Exactly, we were all there. And, uh, and the letter bounced back after a month that I've been thinking, my God, now Shaki has received my letter. I don't care if it doesn't answer to me, but I like the idea that he had got a touch of my existence somehow. This was enough for me, actually. My dream was partially accomplished already. And then the letter came back. And this was like the world falling apart, you know. I mean, it's childish, but since this was a kind of child dream, even if I was already old, uh, <coughs> somehow, uh, this was a big disappointment. And so I stayed there with a... And it was something written there by the postman and I didn't really read it and I threw the 
the letter inside, inside uh, uh, somewhere, you know, and I forgot about it for six months. After six months, I found the letter again, and for the first time, I had digested the disappointment. I read what the postman wrote with a very chaotic uh, uh, handwriting. And it was written, try with the Multnomah County Library. I saw him there some days ago. What does it mean? And uh, so I wrote a letter writing, Multnomah County Library, Portland, Oregon, USA. Sorry if I disturb you, but somebody told me Shaggy has been seen in your place. Do you have by chance his address? Very naive and so. After one week or two weeks, I received a letter from the Mutnoma County Library. I had spelled it wrongly, but nevertheless, it arrived at the station. They very politely answered back and said, Dear Mr. Qualia, uh, the, the Portland telephone book quotes, uh, says the address of Jackie is this one. So what did I do? I still had a package with a letter of mine and some stories of mine and all the stuff that which I sent to Shekley, which came back, was still closed because I didn't uh, reopen actually the package. So I made a bigger package, I put the old package inside and they sent a new letter with, to Shekley with the story of what had happened. And like in a matryoshka, it was inside, it was the old letter with the original letter, everything sealed, you know, by the original uh, post uh, stamps and stuff. And so I sent him uh, the things, and after some weeks I received a letter from Shackley, and uh, so I got in contact with him. Uh, I will save you all the steps. One day I will write a book of the, about the whole story, because it's, I find it's very nice, actually, to, to tell the whole story about that. But I will just end up that my, my dream went beyond uh, this, this point, and we became friends. He came to visit me. We traveled around Europe for months. Uh, when he was 77, he separated from his fifth wife and came to live in my place in Genova because he found that this was the best place to come. So for some months he was there. I came here to Atlantic Room with Shackley in 99. Uh, great story. Then he passed away in uh, 2005 and after that his wife sent me a letter in which she said uh, at the end of the letter that in his last years I was his dearest friend. So we are speaking about something which goes a hundredfold uh, times beyond the dream, you know. You have the dream to meet one time an author and you end up with his wife saying that I was his best friend. And to just this is Again, a little minimalistic story about the power of dreams. Sometimes the result can overhang completely your originally great dream. You discover that actually there was 100 times more to go beyond your own dream. And to just finish the story, uh, I had another little story. One time I was complaining with Shackley that anyway I have no readers. and. Uh, um, because my books are not so commercial and stuff. And I told him about a Romanian fan who wrote to me and told me that I'm the best writer that he has ever read in his life. And, uh, and I was so moved by that, by him. I, I met him and so. And I told him, I have only one reader, I told to Shekley. And he told me, perhaps that's the destiny of every writer. I have also only one reader, and this is you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, this was a beautiful answer. And years later, I would meet this, Ital uh, this Romanian fan who, meanwhile, had become a very successful Romanian blogger. Maybe you have heard, of, somebody of you have heard about him. He is Braduț Florescu. He has uh, the site tadu.ro. He's a blog about traveling. Many people know him. He has thousands and thousands of followers. One time, so we met. We spent some time again together. And I told him the story and said, everybody has only one reader. Uh, and I told him the story that I told to Shackley that he was my only reader, you know. I think that he will remember it for a long time. And now he has the same pattern. He has also his public and so. So it's very funny. I, he had the dream to meet me. I had the dream to meet 
Shackley. He became more famous than me <laughs> in Romania for sure. So, power of dreams. I think I said enough. <laughs> well, bravo. well, let me tell you that I have, I have never dreamt that one day I shall uh, make an interview with Robert Shackley, which actually happened because Roberto came to my television with Robert Shackley. So if you want to know more about Robert Shackley and Roberto Qualia, put on Google Shackley, Shackley or Roberto Qualia because you have it on you and you will, it is a wonderful one hour uh, discussion about science fiction and uh, the world uh, around us. Uh, but, I, I, uh, I want to no. add something to this story because yeah. this is a beautiful story, if I may. Uh, we were just for a few days in Bucharest. We got the phone call <coughs> that there was this possibility to make the interview. We had short pants, we didn't have time to go dress ourselves properly. So we were trying that to, to hide ourselves a little bit, you know, to be more decency, you know. And when actually uh, Shakli died, uh, this video, which was put on the internet, uh, was downloaded by thousands and thousands of people all over the world. In this moment, this interview, it was one of the few available footage, I mean meaningful footage, because it was a one hour talk show, so it's a deep, a deep uh, product, it's not just a little interview of five minutes, it was more than that, it was a one hour talk show. This is, it was the main item about Shackley available on the internet in the moment of his death, and all over the world it was downloaded. It was, I calculated, it was something like uh, hundreds of gigabytes of traffic, or thousands. It was mind-boggling. It was uh, luckily I had some free, 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 uh, a lot of bandwidth because. Uh, so actually, this is a little story that sure. I wanted to. It's to wonderful. Talk. Strange things happen on Earth. You can be sure. Uh, but in the book you are going to write, please put something in more. What happened to you when you won a trip from Napoli or from uh, Milano to London paying one euro? So he won this one euro trip and uh, Roberto said, I cannot stand it, you know, I cannot resist. I shall go on plane, go to London and come back because paying one euro for that is something out of this. Yeah. So he went to London for one euro and back. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. in the same so far. I think that's it. If I just, has something yeah, to I want to close with uh, my dream. Also have a dream. And uh, that dream went in uh, almost every summer in 18s. I come here in this area just next to, to the river over there to fishing with my, uh, my father. And I have a dream that uh, maybe uh, if I would have a chance in one day to cross here on this island because not boats in around here so it was only animals who crossed the river and back um, no people was touching here this land so I just dream one day I would cross over there and uh, first step I uh, I met here in night in 1989 together with Alessandro and because of an idea so, because of Alexander's idea, I change my dream, and that dream come to reality and be real, starting with nightings, and finally Atlantic needs something from my dream, and you part of my dream. So, thank you for being part of my dream. Try to always be in a dream. You'll live long and beautiful lives. That's it. Thank you, folks. If there are some questions, if someone wants to ask you, soon, even in Romanian, chiar și românește, dacă cineva vrea să întrebe ceva sau să How important it is to have an idol in your life? Does it help you exceed your expectations or to 
reach a certain goal because I personally don't have an idol and I was thinking do I have a problem should I have an idol in my life or a model okay. Okay, I will take a shot on that and then pass over to someone. Thank you very much for your question because I, uh, in my sense, I think it's very, very crucial. Because even though I'm talking about a dream, the path I was able to take, uh, one of, uh, some of the masters that I follow talk about is the purpose of your life. And all of them, the one that I actually will consider idol or those who help me be the person I am today, always send me within myself from Socrates all the way down they will tell you that you need to take that trip within yourself in order to know who you are and know where you can be but they were instrumental in doing that you can wake up in the morning and look at that mirror and and see yourself and communicate with yourself but it may help from my perspective to have others, not just one person, but others telling you that you can do that. That voice will help you, you know. Because sometimes, you know, we all wake up one day and you feel like lazy, but hearing someone that believes in you, someone that uh, actually has done something, you know, tell you, yes, you can do it, sometimes can help. That's what I say. It's very important. It's not paramount, it's not the, it's, you cannot do, you can do without it, I think, but I think it helps to have someone that you're trying to emulate, to help you having it, like I said, for me was having a purpose in my life. The day I leave, what do I want to leave behind? Because I'm sure we are going to leave someday. You know, what I'm going to use my life for. It didn't come, it may be uh, after the trip that I went within myself to find out, but it was people, other people encouraged me to make that trip within myself. Thank you. Good. Anyone else? <laughs> I would say yes and no. On, on, on one level, <clears throat> the yes part, yeah, it is good to, to look at somebody else. Role models are very good and it is good to emulate, uh, to emulate them, to, to look at what are they doing, what, uh, what can I do? And which is good, they, like uh, you said, they give us motivation to reach there. But at the end of the day, it comes back to you. Yes, your role model is doing one, two, three, but what are you doing yourself? So yes, they're doing this, but then it comes back to you. What am I going to do about it? I can tell you something, but at the end of the day, it will depend on are you going to do what I'm encouraging you to do. So once again, looking at yourself. Uh, I want to add something. Um, actually, to have models somehow, it's inevitable and necessary. Because models, this is, you know, we, 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 we are born empty. Uh, if our, 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 our parents are our first models, we don't choose them. Sometimes we need to add other models, so they are necessary. Idols are idealized models. Sometimes idols can be a necessary evil. For example, Shakley was an idol of mine in a way. But it was a kind of necessary evil because it was a very good model and I went immediately beyond the idol level in the moment I met him. So the point is to have an idol is good as long as you can have a, a, a good relation with the reality. A lot of people go in front of the idols and they cannot see the person because they are blinded by the idol which is in her, her mind. And this is very frustrating for these famous people because they cannot interact with you because you don't see them. You see the idealized version of them. So, in this case, I had an idol. In the moment I met him, in five minutes, I was talking to Robert, not with Shackley. I could never put them in together in my mind. One is the idol and one is the person. This is why I became friends. So, the idol is a necessary evil, but you have to abandon it as soon as you have a better alternative, like a, a real relation. If the question was about ideals in the alone, the answer may be that here we stay together trying to work for something that I would call, maybe pompously, uh, a world with a forever peace. It could be a dream and it 
I think it's building itself slowly, slowly. Any other questions?